I want you to tell us what those lowest moments of childhood felt like in one word. Temporary. Absolutely temporary. There was just no way I was gonna let that person beat me again. And there was just no way I was gonna stay comfortable in this negative place. Just a matter of time. Some things are just destiny, you know? Look, everybody goes through a moment in their life where everything you thought up to that second vanishes and you realize that there's an opportunity to change the story that you've written in your head for the last two, three decades. And I think it's universal. I think there are very few people who don't get to a point at year 20, 30, 35 that don't start debating, wait a minute, is this what I want? Is this where I'm going? Is this how it's playing out? And you know, to me, that is one of the most important moments in one's life. You know, many people look at it as a moment to start to get upset and say, wait a minute, this is not what I signed up for. And others, regardless of what's happened, use it as an opportunity to write the next chapter. You know, I think anybody who's listening right now, if you wanna set yourself up for success, ask yourself how much risk you've taken in the first 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years of your life. When I started talking about business on Twitter, every single comment in 2009 was, shut your mouth, wine boy, stay in your lane. I'm telling you right now, you wanna talk about why so many of you aren't exactly where you wanna be? Look deep inside yourself on what your expectations of others are. Ask yourself how much you've been succumbing to peer pressure. Like if you've always wanted to be cool to the popular kids in your high school, you're in trouble. The amount of people in here that have a job they hate and they buy things they don't care about to impress people they don't give a f about scares the shit out of me. Most people spend money on dumb things which then forces them to do things they don't want. Long before I became the wine guy on YouTube and Twitter, I was a businessman. And I think if it's your truth, there's a very big difference between being an entrepreneur and a successful entrepreneur. I can say that I'm a football player. Doesn't mean I'm gonna get paid to do it. And so I think the truth, I, I think it's unbelievably uh, exciting for me. It feels warm in my heart that the thing that I've seen consistently analyzing this every second of my breathing day for the last decade has been whatever your truth may be, as long as it is actually your truth, you will always over-index. And people have told me to not curse on stage, you know, my agents who book like, stop cursing on stage because we're losing so much money. I'm like, I can't. I have to be me and wherever the chips fall and I think for everybody, A, it's fun because it's easier and B, audiences, audiences are smart, to your point. You can smell when that person wants to put their agenda through. Mm. And so I think the truth, which is a very exciting answer to this question, the truth is undefeated. My friends, accountability, giving with no expectation in return, playing the long game, every single person's business or ambition will grow exponentially tomorrow if they spend the next 13 years giving away free content forever. Seems super non-natural. When do you monetize? How do you do this? The person that holds the breath the longest wins. Until this room redefines success into waking up in the morning and being happy versus money, we will be in a bad place. Think about two core things in my opinion. One, you have to, at all costs, not beat your own self up with yourself. At all costs. It's huge. Yeah. You need to really be your own biggest fan instead of critiquing everything. Number two, moments in time. You've gotta wrap your head around how young you actually are. You have to wrap your head around how early in the process this is and how this is just a very small moment in time. 400 trillion to one. I just want everybody to hear this. This is the reason I'm happy 24-7, 365 for the rest of my life. 400 trillion to one. The odds of becoming a human being. You might not like the human being situation you ended up in, but let me tell you this. 
your mom might have grabbed another glass of wine and you never would have been. (laughs) I mean, 400 trillion to one. I've never seen anything that scares me as much as sitting with somebody in their 80s or 90s who spends all their time talking to me and not about not what they did, but what they wish they did. And in that, there's something that I think can really work here, and here's what I mean by that. I believe that if everybody in this room had a better relationship with understanding time, they could be much happier. I feel like people are grossly impatient. I don't think that people that are 55 years old realize they have 20 more years of executing in a world where they grew up as kids and 55 seems so old and people were dying at a different age and retiring at a different age. I think if you actually saw regret up close and personal for one day, that a lot of the things that you're not doing, that it could scare you into doing it. I live a life already where people email me on a tactical level the regret that they wish they listened to me around this, that, or the other thing three or four or five years ago. Um, you know, it's funny. It's really hard to ask a giraffe to be a penguin or vice versa. And so one thing that's become much more obvious to me as I've gotten older is like, wow, DNA is powerful. Like, I'm so comfortable with no and losing and fear, but I'm so empathetic to people that aren't. I, and this will surprise a lot of you that maybe follow me, I'm unbelievably comfortable with aggressiveness and candor and binary talk on stage, but one-on-one, I've really struggled over the last 25 years as an executive with radical candor and shooting it straight because I'm so optimistic and I'm always trying to fix it. And so that's taken me a lot of work. And through that work, it, I'm like, okay, you know, there's the things that come natural and the things that aren't. If you grew up in a framework with parents or customs that really desperately overvalue outside affirmation, the opinions of your parents' parents or siblings because you come from, a, let's call it what it is, an immigrant background where there's a huge commonality there. Um, school, you were so deeply bought into school that the short-term affirmation of every 90 days with grades and report cards made you comfortable. It's very hard to then go into, hey, hey, this is what you should learn from entrepreneur land. Like, don't worry about it, it's all gonna be fine. That's very hard. You've fully built yourself as an animal to completely value outside judgment that is not based on the market but based on another human being. That's what I'd like people to learn, which is like, hey, like, what are we doing here? You've won the 400 trillion to one lottery of being a human being. Do you really wanna live with regret? Like, do you not understand that the internet is the greatest optionality in the history of mankind? That our grandparents and everybody behind them had nowhere close to the options you sit with today? And really, like, what are you valuing that's making you conform into doing something that doesn't make you happy? Your current overhead? So sell your home and rent. That sounds crazy. You know, when I started talking about like, hey, in the pursuit of happiness, would you consider selling your home and renting? I mean, I got destroyed in the comments sections and a lot of the play like, like that I'm some horrible person. I'm like, how is living your life to pay the bills that you've created for yourself? That's all humans, all that humans do are create their own jails and then live within it. That's all we do. So, so knowing that that's very hard in a human way, the situation you have with your parents, all that stuff, The professional one feels like I have a prayer of communicating that and letting people, and here's my point. If you wanna be a professional skier or if you wanna start a a blog or podcast around cooking, my big thing is if you jump and start swimming, you know, this is riding a bike, kissing a boy or girl or, 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 you know, swimming. This is, it seems super scary until you do it and then you just laugh about why it felt so scary. Like if you go do that thing and live more humble, live with judgment, you could always get a job again. Like I don't know, like I just, my great fear is regret. Because it is the obvious thing I see in people that are 80 to 100 years old that seems super scary. Nobody was thrilled that they played it safe. It just, you don't see it. And I think people should spend more time with 80 to 100 year olds that aren't their grandparents. I mean it. I mean it, I think people need context.
on life a little bit. I think people have a horrible relationship with time. Do you know how many people in this room are scared shitless of 30? Like it's some thing, like it means nothing. But our society has decided to tell you that you have to figure it out and marry and children and what are you talking about? 98% of the 59 year olds I know don't have it figured out. The hell are we supposed to have it all figured out at 30? 25, like people are making terrible decisions. Getting married because they think they're supposed to by this age. You know, like buying homes because they think they're supposed, like the rules of modern society have led to, everybody wants to blame technology, you know, and drug companies for, you know, all our problems. We need to blame our norms, our expectations, our ridiculous North Stars that have, make no sense. We're living, when I look at this young of a crowd, they're living to 110. There's an enormous amount of people in here that are gonna live to 110 and are freaking out that they don't have it figured out by 30. You're not even a quarter of the way there yet. <laughs> <laughs>